You can be a Christian and yet suffer because you don't know how to turn calamities into deliverance. You can be a pastor praying for others and yet suffer because you don't know how to turn calamities into deliverance. One of the first steps to take when you are looking for deliverance out of your crisis, one of the first things to take note of when you are looking for healing from your sickness, one of the first things to always take note of when you are looking for prosperity inside of poverty is to go deep down and do self-examination. To turn calamity into deliverance, there must first be self-examination. When you are shifting blame to others and to other situations, you are not ready for deliverance. Blame them is a proof that you are not close to your deliverance. If you keep pointing fingers at others, when do you want to get restoration? The road to restoration is self-examination. Let me just encourage you. It is good to hear this before prayer. All situations can be turned around under a certain condition. That is why the Bible says, with God, all things are possible. But with man, everything is not possible. Not that they are not possible. There are a level of possibility with man. But there is a greater possibility with who? With God. No matter how ugly your situation is, calamity can be turned into deliverance. Oh yes, you can be delivered from calamities. You can be delivered from crisis. You can be delivered from shame. You can be delivered from reproach. It is possible. Having that mentality that this my problem can never go. I hope you know that Daniel's case in the lion's den was turned around. Are you talking about Job's case that lost everything in one day? The case was what? Turn around under a certain condition. Oh yes, under a certain conditions, there are levels of fire that when you put a meta, it may not do anything to the meta. Do you believe that? But there are other levels of fire that you can put any meta and it melts into pieces once. Yes or no? Do you believe that with me? So what is the difference between them? In other words, what prayer cannot do, a greater prayer can do them. What fire cannot do, more fire can do what? Can do them. Under certain conditions, all problems can be solved. All problem, all problem has a requirement that it must leave. If you can meet that requirement, calamities, my shame, my pain can be torn into deliverance. Oh yes, my sickness can turn into good health. My disappointment can be turned into appointment. My loneliness can be turned into fulfillment. Frustration can be turned into a life of beauty and glory under certain condition. And where you are, brothers and sisters, is that condition that God can use to turn your situation around. Deliverance is possible. Healing is possible. Freedom is possible. But it's not possible at all atmosphere. There is an atmosphere that when you enter into it, your healing is once. Prophet T.B. Joshua said, when God is present, he said healing is like breathing. That is, when that atmosphere is filled with Jesus, you can breathe in and breathe out your healing. You can go there with pain, even without being touched, and your pain goes away. That is an atmosphere. 
let me tell you something. There are three things you should take note of. If you truly want to turn your calamities into deliverance, what do you need to do? What must I do? The rich young ruler asked Jesus. He said, what must I do to be saved? What must I do to enter the kingdom of God? Man of God, what must I do for my calamity to be turned to deliverance? Many never receive today. Why? Because they don't know how they can turn calamities into deliverance. You can be a Christian and yet suffer. Why? Because you don't know how to turn calamities into deliverance. You can be a pastor praying for others and yet suffer because you don't know how to turn calamities into deliverance. You can be blessing others and yet still die because you don't know how to turn calamities into deliverance. One of the first steps to take when you are looking for deliverance out of your crisis, one of the first things to take note of when you are looking for healing from your sickness, one of the first things to always take note of when you are looking for prosperity inside of poverty is to go deep down and do self-examination. It's what? Self- I can't hear you. Self what? Self what? Self what? Examination. As simple as it may be, this has cheated many people today. We are good to say the reason why my business collapsed was because of the economy of the nation. The reason why my husband left me was because he's seen other women. More women are beautiful than me. And you never sit down to examine yourself. If there is no self and thorough examination, there cannot be deliverance. The first stage of deliverance from any calamity, problem of life, challenges of life, is self-examination. You can be here today and they told you when you go to road back to Jesus, one tip Joshua's son is there. He will pray for you and will be free. But let me tell you, only those who truly sit down and examine themselves first that can attract the attention of Jesus. Jesus will never give his attention to arrogant believer who shift blame to others and ignore themselves. Jesus, the Jesus I know, the Jesus I know will never waste his deliverance, healing power, restoration power on you without self-examination. You must sit down and examine yourself. Where have I missed the mark? It is very comforting to say this man was the cause of my problem. He's the cause. If he did not betray me, I will not be like this. We did business together. He was not faithful. He was my brother. He has money. He's supposed to help me. I don't know why he's refusing to help me. God will punish him because he did not help me. My God will judge him. You are not ready to come out of your calamity. You go deeper and deeper, shifting blame to people. We are so good. Some of us, we even shift blame to God. God, if you have answered me, will I still be here? We shift blame to our nation. We shift blame to our relative. We shift blame to our society. And eventually, we still shift that blame to Satan. I say, the cause of my problem is the devil. Wonderful. If I'm the cause, you didn't think about the one you have done. Do you think it's every situation we go through that the devil is involved? Many of us, we are the architect of our problem. We design and arrange the problem and fall inside. And yet, we look at the devil and say, you are the cause. And the devil is surprised. To turn calamity into deliverance, there must first be self-examination. Have you examined yourself in this season? Why is my life not moving forward? Where am I missing the mark? I pray and fast, yet no solution. Is there anything I'm doing wrong? 
Where? The little man in the Bible, the rich young ruler who rushed to Jesus, he was so eager to prove a point to Jesus. And Jesus said, you have not examined yourself. What must I do to be saved? Good master. And Jesus says, young man, be humble. Without self-examination, no one can have eternal life. Without self-examination. By the time Jesus tell him to go and do this and do that, he say, Jesus, forget about this. Forget, oh my God. Forget about what you are saying. We know everything. We know everything. We have been reading the Bible. We know the scripture. We obey it. When I was small, and Jesus said, my God, so you know all these things. And why is your life not producing results? It is so painful to know too much and have little result. I know. Don't tell me anything. You can't correct me. All I need now, man of God, all I just need now is just I need uh, about two million era to start uh, uh, maybe an internet business now. And I will be made. I'm so skillful. And God said, are you not tired of foolishness? Because what you are doing now is pure foolishness. Without self-examination, no amount can save you. Add 100 million to your account will soon become 100,000 era in a moment of time. Where am I getting it wrong? Why is it that things does not last in my hand? Why is it that things does not grow in my hand? Whatever they give me today, tomorrow is shortage. Everybody do this business, I do it. Something is wrong somewhere. Self-examination. Tell your neighbor, say, examine yourself. Say, examine yourself. I can't hear you say, examine yourself. Say, examine yourself. Examine yourself. If it is true, you are looking for deliverance. If it is true, you are looking for healing. Oh, shifting blame will not be the best for you. Self-examination is the secret of turning any calamity into deliverance. Lord, I, I, I take responsibility. Let me show you a scripture in the Bible. Luke chapter 15 and verse 17. There is a young man in the Bible that can, we can use as a picture of self-examination. They call him the prodigal son. Who take his, his father's wealth? He told his father, "Say, give me my own share. I want to go and enjoy myself. The father gave it to him and said, are you sure you want to go? He said, yes, I want to go. I'm strong enough. I'm mature enough. I'm adult enough. The father said, okay, no problem. If you are mature enough, let me give it to you. Yes or no? He received all the wealth from his father. He went to a far country. Then he began to enjoy himself and spend it. The Bible says he spent it lavishly, riotously. And after some time, everything got finished. I'm only giving you the breakdown of the story. Everything got finished. He began to be in want. And nobody gave to him at all. Eventually, he joined himself to be feeding pig and swine. But after the whole story and the pain and the lesson, something happened. Let us check this now. Verse 17 now. It says, but when he what? Came to he what? But when he came to himself, he said, hold on. So that means we can actually come to ourselves. When he came to himself, my question for you, oh giant man, beautiful woman, beautiful and handsome man, have you come to yourself? You that say it is the government that is the cause of my problem. You that say it is my husband that is the cause of my problem. You that say it is my wife that is the cause of my problem. You that say it is my neighbor, my community. If I can be in UK now, my problem will be solved. Have you come to yourself? We can come to ourselves. Self-examination makes us to sit down and reflect. This young man came to himself after the suffering. He said, no, I can't continue to be. I'm a son of a king. How come now I'm not living here? And this man has the right to begin to bind and cast Satan. And may God punish all the prostitutes that ate my money. 
those prostitutes, they, they were the cause of my problem. If I have not met Delilah, I would not have been in this kind of place now. Those my bad friends are the cause of my problem. I don't like these bad friends anymore. Brothers and sisters, when you are shifting blame to others and to other situations, you are not ready for deliverance. Blame them is a proof that you are not close to your deliverance. Are you not the cause? You are the cause of my problem. It's my mother at home that is the cause. It's my family. When you are pointing blame or shifting blame, you are far from your deliverance. How far are you from deliverance out of your shifting blame? What a useless man. That my husband was the cause of all my problems. And God said, remain there. You remain there. Instead of you to take the responsibility, I misbehave with my life. I can't even say it's my... Saying that to God is already a proof. Let me tell you one thing about Prophet T.B. Joshua. I've been privileged to live with a great prophet. When I say live with a great prophet, we are sons and daughters of the prophet. But one thing is clear. Anytime you are reported, let me tell you. Come, my brother. Stand up. Okay, this is... A, you, you can just add the prophet for us. Eh? Each time they bring a case and say, Sir, this man has done a lot of things. This man jumped out of the window. This man climbed the roof. This man did that. He will be quiet. And one simple question, after all the explanation, he will ask the young man, what can you say? The same way they make allegation against the woman, adulterous woman in the Bible. Then they ask Jesus, what can you say? Nice statement can be, sir, it's not my fault. It is his fault. It is not my fault. It is that woman's fault. They are the one that pushed me into this problem. Immediately, you are going to be punished. Why? Because you are still shifting blame. Instantly, a wise one, immediately all the allegation is on him. Before the master asks him, what can you say? You are on your knee. And say, sir, if you don't help me, where else can I go? No way. As you are saying that, all you accuse, I say, no, sir. He's a pretender. He's a deceiver. You that they say you are pretending. Don't she blame. Stand and say, God, I am sorry. And the master will say, say something. And all your sin will be, Father, have mercy. I did it. All what they are saying is true. I did not know enough. And as they are saying it, all your accusers are looking at you with anger. But the prophet look at you with love and compassion. What a, what a wise child. Let me tell you, there are many that have been sent out from the king's palace today because they were busy pointing fingers why they make the mistake. They were busy pointing finger why they could not be perfect. They were busy pointing finger. The reason why I have not settled down to today because, uh, because all my family members, there is idol there. Is that the reason? Is that the enough reason? Is that what you are using as a justification? You will not come out from that problem. Why can't you take responsibility? And say, Father, I played a role. You gave me 10 million naira, but I blew it anyhow. Father, can you please give me another chance? Can you please? Uh, five men has come to seek my hand in marriage. Nobody come. Don't say it's not me or it's them. I don't see the one that I like. Along the line, something happened. You are about to be alone forever. Continue to shift blame to them that they are the cause. Let me tell you, when you truly take responsibility and examine yourself that you played a role in this problem, that will lead you and graduate you into brokenness. Self-examination. I hope you know that this man, before he knelt down, he has examined the situation and said, Hi, 
Who will I blame now? Who will I blame now? Who is going to be the cause now? God is not a God that is looking for who you will blame. God is not even blaming you for your own sin. Why are you not blaming someone else? I hope you know that the reason why Adam and Eve lost their dominion was because of blame. When God met Adam, Adam, what have you done? He said, it is the wife that you have given to me. God remained quiet on Adam for a long time and made the wife, the wife, what is this you have done? He said, it is the serpent. Then they asked the serpent, what have you done? And the serpent was quiet. There was power in silence. Serpent today takes dominion over the earth because he was quiet. He did not shift blame to people. You keep shifting blame. When you shift blame, you also shift power to people. The serpent was quiet and immediately dominion was transferred. Okay, let me not tell you. When Jesus came to come and redeem the world, when they were persecuting him, they said, what do you have to say? He was on the cross, but he was quiet. Both Satan and Jesus was quiet to take back dominion. He came to save you when they asked him, can't you save yourself? Are you not the king of the Jew? Are you not this and that? He remained quiet. Satan wants him to speak because immediately he speaks and she blame. His dominion will be transferred. Self-examination is the secret for every deliverance. Until you examine yourself and know that the problem you are in, you have a road here. If you say all is devil, then you are not ready for freedom. If you can cry to Jesus and say, Jesus, look at my life. My life is not moving forward because every opportunity you have given to me, I did not manage it well. I have four children. Nobody is even looking at me at all. They are not grown up. They've abandoned me. I shame on them. They are not even serious. A curse is upon them. You will die alone. Until you say, Lord, where did I make the mistake? Where did this error come from? Father, can you please, can you please educate me and help me? Father, if you leave me like this, there is no way I can survive. The prodigal son said, Father, let me come to myself. I will arise and I will go back to my father. And I will tell my father, I am no longer worthy to be a son. Self-examination can make you come back to your senses. Beautiful woman, come back to your senses. Oh, handsome man, rich man. So that your case will not become once upon a time. You know this man was once Rachel. What happened now? Because he could not examine himself. He believed that it's because the economy is down and that is why he's no more making money. No knowing that it is his pride that has overshadowed him. Man of God, are you sure that it is not your pride that makes your members to live? Don't say, I don't, I don't know what is happening now. It's like my idol, the idol of my family is fighting my anointing. Be careful. Once upon a time, you told your member, if they want to go, you can go. And today, they obey you and left. Instead of you to admit that you played a role, you were not cultured with your words. You were not cultured with your character. You were not cultured. You play with the anointing. And today, everywhere is empty. You say, no, God. God is the idol. Before you blame an idol, have you do a self-examination? Have you done a self-examination? When you do thorough examination, let me tell you, it will lead you into brokenness. And when you get to a point of brokenness, which is the second one, let me tell you, brokenness is the state that God cannot reject. No matter what you lose in your life, don't lose sincerity. Be sincere to yourself. The day you begin to deceive yourself, you are dead, even though you are still living. No matter, you lose your property, but don't lose sincerity to yourself. Learn to tell yourself the truth. I, I make this mistake. This is my mistake. You cannot run back to God, though, unless there is self-examination 
And unless that self-examination graduates into brokenness, brokenness is what God is looking for in your life. But to be broken, you must have a deep thought about yourself. If you keep shifting blame, even in the level you are now, when will you come out of that problem? If you keep pointing fingers at others, when do you want to get restoration? When? The road to restoration is self-examination. The road to recovery is self-examination to get your deliverance out of your calamity. Sometimes you need the prophetic. You need the what? You need the word. Oh yes, when I say the prophetic does not mean the prophet. You need the prophetic. Philippians chapter 1 and verse 19. Can we read it together now? He said, for I know that this will turn uh -huh. but for my word through your word and what? The support of the spirit of who? He said this will turn into my word deliverance. That this this my situation I'm going through now. It can be turned into deliverance. But there is a condition. He said but through your prayers. Not my prayer. Sometimes when you can be going this, this calamity, if you boast and say, I'm also a man of God, I don't need deliverance. <laughs> Every deliverer also needs deliverance. The third stage of coming out of your problem, sometimes when the problem has overwhelmed you, you just need an intercessor to help you out at that time. Every midwife, no matter how professional you are, and you are a midwife, you help people to deliver baby. I hope you know that when it is your turn to deliver to, someone must help you. Have you delivered your baby by yourself because you are professional? No. When that time and that Kairos moment, when the baby is due to be delivered, no matter how professional you are, you must also lie down and let your staff who you have trained for years be the professional at that time. And you must be the patient. It is very important let me tell you the truth. There are certain things you will not be able to do for yourself. After your self-examination, after your deep cry to God, sometimes God meander you into a place like this for a supernatural shift that can shift you from one level into another level entirely. Oh, let me tell you, once upon a time in the Bible, between Elisha and the servant, while they were building, they said the axe head fell into the river. Yes or no? And the master, those boys, I hope you know that the boys that were building, they were also prophets. They were junior prophets. Yes or no? They would have said, no, I don't need, I don't need Elisha. Let me command. They have taught me on how to command things to come back. They will be surprised that the axe will go down and down and down in shame. If you keep bragging of what I can do, we are colleagues. What is there you can do, I cannot do. You get ready to get deeper and deeper into calamities. He said, alas, master, for it was borrowed. He said, come, show me the place. Now that you know you are humble enough and you are broken enough, you have examined yourself that this kind of thing need a higher grace. He said, show me the place. There was a woman in the Bible, that same place again. This one of the sons of the prophet who died out of depression and left the woman to become a widow and have many debts. Elisha was alive. Who would have helped him to clear the debt? But he was boasting, I'm also a man of God. Eventually, those debts caused depression into him and he died and left the woman with two children. The woman said, I will not make the mistake of my husband. I will run to Elisha and I will tell Elisha that help me. My husband was one of the sons of the prophets. I hope you know that it was pride that killed a man. Because it was, how will I meet Elisha? Elisha, how will I meet my fellow classmates? 
And it is obvious that your life is not producing the result that is coming from him. He died because his death was going up and up and up and up. Don't tell me that the man did not pray. He prayed. But yet the problem remained the same. I tell you that under a certain condition, all problems can be solved. That means when you pray, your problem did not solve. That means you need a higher condition to meet with that situation so that it can be melted. When the man finally died and died out of pride, the wife wake up and say, no, I won't allow pride to blind me. There is a prophet in this land. He went and said, oh, my prophet, look at the debt that is piled up. And um, Elisha said, since you have come, but let me ask you one question. What do you have? He said, we have nothing but only that oil. Prophet said, that oil is still enough. By the grace that is here, he can turn all calamities with that oil. Instantly, an instruction was given. He said, go and gather vessel and gather not a few. And when you have gathered that vessel, pour those oil, it will keep multiplying and multiplying. And that is how that woman come out of death. Do you see that not every death is a death of Christ? Some death are the death of pride and arrogance. So what killed the husband was so cheap if you have met the prophetic. There are many problems we are suffering today. That if truly we can be humble and say, I need a grace to deliver me. I have tried by my own power and might. I realize that this thing is not working. Thou son of David, have mercy on me. Other ones were busy laughing there. And laughing and say, keep quiet. Keep quiet, Batmos. Keep quiet. This Jesus does not like noise. Batmos said, no. I have agreed that this blindness need a higher grace. I have agreed that this issue, I can't remain like this forever. When there was a prophet passing here, I will humble myself and I will cry aloud. I will, I will declare my, my limitation before the prophet. I won't say, you know, prophet, you know, can you tell Jesus to, to, to see me through if you don't mind? Can, can I be rescued? I mean, uh, is this, my problem is not too critical. It's just that uh, it's just that you will never be blessed like that. You can't be blessed like that. In short, the more your ego, the, you are postponing your deliverance day. You are not supposed to be like this. Pride keeps extending miracle day. Pride is an extension. You'll be speaking English. No, 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 no. It's not, it's not too bad, but if... if if God is pleased, let him give me, I mean, a contract. And heaven fold hand and, and they are angry with your arrogance. They are angry with your pride. They are angry with your self-righteousness. He said, man of God, not, not like I've seen. I, I, for, for the best I can know, I've been a, a virgin. I've been a holy man. I've never committed any sin. I don't smoke. I don't drink. And heaven say, what does that have to do with all? A broken and a contrite heart. Oh God, you will not despise. You, who is asking you of the, your story of purity, your story of self-righteousness, your journey of holiness? When you come before God, he says, all our righteousness is but a filthy rag before God. Poverty Joshua said, no matter how good, no matter how fine your character is, you can't do too much to earn God's mercy and favor. He said, God has chosen grace rather than works. This is where you see those who you think are not supposed to be great. Finally. This is where you see those who are, you are not, they are not supposed to be healed because of the level of their brokenness and how they are sincere in crying to God. God have mercy on them and use them. And you, you are even shocked and say, wonder shall never end. Though. Nothing God cannot do. Look at the prostitute that have changed. Eh? Hey. Brothers and sisters, don't postpone your deliverance because of pride. No settled home also need deliverance. 
poverty need deliverance. Cost need deliverance. Limitation in progress need deliverance. Why are you postponing your miracle date? Because you cannot examine yourself. Who are you pointing at as the cause of your problem? Who tell you that is the cause of your problem? You are part of the architect of this problem. Until you own up and tell Jesus how sorry you are because you played the role. You played the role in it. That is when God can step in and have mercy on you. And the beautiful thing about it, you can't force God. Let me tell you, beyond your, your titan, if you lie, build 10 church for different people, you'll be still be surprised that God may still leave you and attend to a prostitute and their life will be restored. He said, God, after everything I've done, who do you do it for? Prophet T. Joshua said, no one can do the work of God. Only God can do his work. If you brag about what you are doing for God, you may be postponing your days of receiving. Can you take one minute and reflect? This current situation you are here today with, are you ready to shift blame to people or you are ready to own up? Calamity can be turned into deliverance when we own up and say, Lord, we are sorry. Lord, I am the cause of this. There was not, no one, no one at all learn from the prodigal son. He said, no. I will come to my senses and I will go back to my father and I will tell my father, please, the way it is now, I won't even. And when you read downward, the father never asked him, Where were the money I gave to you? Because he was broken. When you are broken, God never asks you, Why do you make those mistakes again? He restores you immediately and twice than before. When Job was broken, let me tell you the truth. I hope you know that Job was also shifting blame. Job shift blame a lot and said, how can my friends accuse me of all this? How can my friend be saying I'm the one, I'm the cause of my problem? He was annoyed and offended. He was angry with God, angry with his friend. But a day came in the book of Job 42 from verse 10. He said, and God restored Job when he prayed for his friend. Let my friend have peace and me too I have peace. I have agreed that I played a role in this one. And God restored him immediately. Maybe God is waiting for you to listen to this message so that he can help you. God has been pushing you to brokenness. You have been too adamant. You have been too strong. Every time you look at people, you say they are the cause of your problem. You look at your surroundings and say, ah, which day will I come out of this acquired bomb, self? Which day will I leave this country, self? Which day will I leave this family house, self? Which day? And God said, stay there. You don't even know. Until you own up and know that you have played a role. That is when your deliverance will come. May God bless his way in the midst of your heart and give you the grace to have a deep self-examination and come out with a total deliverance. In Jesus' name. Amen. Are you blessed? Are you blessed? Say, tell your neighbor, examine yourself. Say, examine yourself. Tell someone, say, examine yourself. Say, without pretense, examine yourself. So don't pretend, neighbor, don't pretend, examine yourself. Examine yourself. No pretense. Examine yourself. If you keep pretending, you are going down and down. Let nobody see that I'm, I'm, I'm a bad person. Let nobody see that I'm... Every, everything that happened to you is people, is people, is people. Everybody see you are sent. With all your sins, nothing has happened in your life. Is a proof that something is wrong. Is a proof. Sit down. When you go home today, don't jump around. Sit down. And say, no. No. There is, there is something wrong here. There needs to be deep examination. If not, the year is about to come to an end. You start another year of shifting blame again. Happy New Year. My neighbor is the one that caused it. By February, your sister is the one that caused it. By March, your uncle is the one that caused it. By April, the devil is the one that caused it. By, March, by, by June, it is God that has delayed your prayer. By, uh, I mean, end of the year again, you say it's your church. You need to change church again. 
How long? How long? How long? How long? How long? How long will you continue that? How long will you tell your husband you are the cause? Too wrong does not make a right. Too wrong. They are wrong. You too learn that you are shifting blame. You are also wrong. If you continue to shift the blame, who is right now? Stupid man. You that call the man stupid, what is you now? What do we call you? Because when you point fingers at people, four is returning to you. So it is time for self-examination. Don't tell anybody you have to tell yourself. I need to. Some of you, when you listen to this message, you are looking at your wife. I hope my wife is hearing. I hope my husband is hearing. This is not a message for different people. It is a message for you. It is for you. Tell your neighbor it's for you. Not just for your wife. Oh. Not just for your husband. It's for you. Thank God my husband came here with me. I thank God he's hearing now. Let him hear very well. It is for you. You that want your husband to hear. You that want your wife to hear. It is for you. You must hear it yourself. Examine yourself so that deliverance can come up in your life once again. So that freedom can pop up again in your life. So that restoration, they say the part of the just is as a shining light. It shines brighter and brighter onto a better day. Self-examination clears the way for you.